In this video, we would be solving part D and part E of question number 10. In your part D says, what can you say about the difference between indifference curves you drew for Bertha and those you drew for Martha? So this is the indifference curve we drew for Bertha, where on the x-axis you have animal crackers and the y-axis you have beans and your indifference curve passes through the point 8, 2 and 6, 4. And lower graph shows the indifference curve for Martha, where again on the x-axis you have annual crackers and on the y-axis you have beans. Now note here that essentially these graphs are identical as I discussed in the previous video as well. Since x-axis have animal crackers, y-axis have beans, the scale of the graphs is same and the indifference curve are also passing through the same points. So there is no difference between the indifference curve we drew for Bertha and those we drew for Martha. They are essentially the same. There is no difference. Now, how could you tell this was going to happen without having to draw the curves? Now, see, here we are able to draw the curves, but when you move ahead in your microeconomics course, so you will not be always drawing the graphs. You will have to tell whether the preferences are same or not, or the indifference curve would look like same or not by just looking at the equation of the graphs or the equation of the curves. Let's suppose the utility for Bertha be represented by ux, which would be your, which was of the form a multiplied by b. And let us call vx, the utility for Bertha as 1000 a square b square. And this was given in, to us in the question. Now, vx is basically the monotonic transformation of ux. Now, what do I mean by monotonic transformation? For that, let's digress a minute and let's learn what do you mean by monotonic transformation? What monotonic transformation? First thing to note here is that whenever we are talking about monotonic transformation, we are considering only positive monotonic transformation and ignoring the negative ones. So this is of no interest here. So in microeconomics, whenever I'm saying about monotonic transformation, your positive monotonic transformations are implied. So be very careful about this. After making the clarification, let's understand what do you mean by monotonic transformation or positive monotonic transformation. Your positive monotonic transformation is a way of transforming one set of numbers into another set of numbers so that the rank of the original set of numbers is preserved. It is thus a function f mapping from real numbers into real numbers which satisfy the property that if x is greater than y then f of x is also greater than f of y. Simply, it is a strictly increasing function. Now, what do you mean by that in economic terms? Thus, any positive monotonic transformation of the utility function is also a utility function representing the same preferences as the original utility function. Because such a transformation preserves the ranked order of the original utility numbers and hence the ranking order of the bundles based on the preference relation. So if I begin with the utility function ux and then use the positive monotonic transformation f to get the new function vx which is equal to f of u of x. Then vx is also a utility function representing the same preferences as the utility function ux. Also, the rate of change of f of u or vx can be measured by looking at the change in f between two values of u divided by the change in u. So, what do I mean by that? That is, change in f with respect to change in u. That would be f of u2 minus f of u1 divided by u 2 minus u1. So for mo monotonic transformation, your f of u2 minus f of u1 always has the same sign as u2 minus u1. That means this would be always positive. That is, monotonic transformation always have a positive rate of change, which graphically means the graph of a monotonic function will always have a positive slope as depicted in this figure. So here in panel A illustrates the monotonic transformation, the one that is always increasing. And panel B illustrates the function that is not monotonic since it increases and sometimes decreases. So here you can see it is decreasing, but here it is increasing. 
So this is not a monotonic transformation, whereas this panel is a monotonic transformation as it is always increasing. So after learning about the concept of monotonic transformation, let's understand if we have a utility function or if we have any kind of function, then how would we, we tell that is that a monotonic transformation or not? You have two approaches with yourself. The one is by using the simple maths, which in this case would not be so simple. And the other is would be using your calculus approach. So your simple maths would be this there where you have to calculate this expression and see if this is positive or not. But that would be a very cumbersome method. So I would suggest you to use calculus for checking if you have a monotonic transformation or not. Now, how do we check monotonicity of function using calculus? For that, focus on the concept which says it is a strictly increasing function or it has a positive rate of change. That means your first derivative, which is your f prime x should be positive and if i map this in this particular case that would be your v prime x should be strictly positive now coming back to the question basically if you'll just see it visually firstly what we have done is we have squared the utility function so that would be u square x and if i square both the sides that would be a square and b square now the element missing here is thousand so if i multiply the entire equation by thousand that would be thousand u square x is equal to thousand a square b square which is equal to vx so now what we have is thousand u square x is equal to vx so squaring both the sides will not change your preferences and multiplying by a positive number will also not change your preferences so this is a monotonic transformation but if you are not able to see this thing that why it is a monotonic transformation by squaring both the sides and multiplying by a positive number you can opt for a calculus method just to be sure so what we can do is, as we just learned, that taking the first derivative and see if it is a positive or not. So let's take the first derivative of vx, that would be v prime x, and that would be 1000 multiplied by 2 of u of x. Now we know that the utility will always be positive. And if I multiply a positive number by 2 and 1000, or if I simplify this, that would be 2000 of u of x. And if this is positive, multiplied by 2000, it will give me positive. That means my first derivative of Vx is positive. And if that is the case, then this is a monotonic transformation. And since the monotonic transformation preserves your preferences, that's why we know your indifference curve would look just identical. This was the reason that your indifference curve looked identical in this particular case. But monotonic transformation does not always ensure that your that your indifference curve would always look identical it could happen that it might change the shape of the curves but your preferences will always remain the same so the monotonic transformation was the reason behind this